is on John Dalton and his theory about atoms. Um, John Dalton was born in 1766 in Cumberland, England. He was born uh, into a Quaker family and he went to the village school there and uh, at the age of 12 he became the teacher which is like really cool because he was like really uber smart. Um, uh, after that, he earned most of his living by teaching and going around and giving lectures, like public speakers, kind of. Um, after 10 years of teaching at a Quaker boarding school, he moved uh, and started teaching in the city of Manchester, England. Uh, there he joined the Manchester Literary and Philosophical Society, which gave him access to laboratory facilities and a stimulating intellectual environment. Um, he started studying meteorology, which is weather. Um, after he had written a book about meteorology and a series of papers, which he turned into the Literary Society, um, he started to study the gases that were like in the air. Yeah, like, like the gases in the atmosphere and stuff. The natural gases. Yeah, the natural gases from that. Um, and from that, he recognized different molecules that formed them. And then he came up with this atomic theory, which I'll read in just a minute. Um, <coughs> although uh, later in life, he, he uh, had many honors and rewards and got all famous in that. He was, he really just <coughs> led a modest Quaker life and he died in 1844. Um, now about his theory, <coughs> as I said, he was studying gases. Well, what he did was he noticed that some things like water and oil don't mix. But he also noticed that different types of gases do mix even though they're different weights, like the water and the oil are different weights, when they separate. Anybody knows that the gases in the air, you can see one gas like this and then the other gas like that, they're all mixed. So he wondered how that would happen. So he studied it some more, um, and he found out that they mix because they're, instead of a uh, more condensed version as in, in the liquid, they were a uh, more expanded, mul expanded expansion of a, tiny, of a bunch of multiple, multiple tiny particles, which could then mix more easily. Um, and that, um, after once he studied that, he found out <coughs> that they were made up of lots of many molecules that made it up instead of it just being there by itself as one molecule. A bunch of little ones made up it, and that's how they were able to expand and mix. And from that, he um, got his theory. Um, it, the idea of atoms, <clears throat> had been proposed much earlier. The ancient Greek philosophers had talked about atoms. Um, they got on the subject of atoms because they were talking about what created the human body. One of them said that our bodies were made out of <coughs> water, which is kind of true. Um, one <coughs> said that we were made out of fire. I don't know how we got that, but... Um, <clears throat> And then one of them just said, we're, prob we're probably made up of a bunch of different little pieces, which gay atoms. So, um, but Dalton's theory was different in that it had the weight and, and of care it had the weight of careful chemical measurements behind it. It wasn't just a philosophical statement that there are atoms because there must be atoms. It, um, his atomic theory stated that the elements consisted by tiny particles called atoms. He said that the reason an element is pure <coughs> is because all atoms, atoms of an element were, are, were identical. Um, in particular, they had the same mass, kind of like um, pure and unpure metals. You know, like a metal is pure, it's got like all the same substances in it as opposed to a non-pure metal, which has other substances in it, too. Um, 
He also said that the reason the elements differed from one another was that the atoms of each element were different from each one another. Um, they had different masses, um, like gold and lead, different the atoms are different, which makes the product different from that. Um, he also said that the compounds consisted of atoms of different elements combined together because <clears throat> compounds are pure substances because the atoms of different elements are bonded to one another somehow. I'm not sure, but and the, so they aren't easily separated from one another. Compounds have constant composition because they contain a fixed <clears throat> ratio of atoms, and each atom has its own characteristic weight, thus fixing the weight ratio of atoms. And each atom has its own character. Uh, no, thus fixing the weight ratio of atoms. The weight ratio of one element to the other. There we go. In addition, he said that the chemical reactions involve the rearrangement of combinations of those atoms. You know, like, that's because the atoms move, I guess. Um, um, uh, I'm going to point out again the difference between a model of atoms and a theory of atoms. A model focuses on describing what the atoms are like, whereas the theory not only talks about what the atoms are like, but how they interact with one another. Like Dalton's model was that the atoms were tiny, um, indivisible, and indestructible particles, and that each one had a certain mass, size, and chemical, chemical behavior. And that was determined by what kind of element they were. Um, when she said that they were indestructible particles, because he was he, he didn't know he hadn't studied it enough. Like we know now that atoms are destructible. That's how we get like atomic bombs and stuff. Um, um, that's it, I guess. Any questions? Any questions? No? Okay, I'm done. Yeah. Woo! Good job!